everybody what's going on we got an art of board strategy session here this is one that's a little bit different from the normal typical strategy sessions that i do uh, oftentimes i i do the style where i just go on the table and show you some cool stuff where uh, this is how you move your guys this is how you should deploy your guys this is how to do a cool pile and trick and don't worry we'll be doing plenty of those those will be back no problem but this is one that was highly requested i have a uh, announcement that thing at the top of the facebook page so you can always uh, list whatever your suggestions you want us to do in the strategy sessions there or if you don't use facebook or don't want to do that feel free to message me or email me at the contact of art of war 40k.com and i'm happy to take suggestions for these strategy sessions so this is one that I think is really important and really interesting because I actually look uh, towards list building and list writing as more of a, an art form just as much as a, as a skill set. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about this. I've been writing lists um, for like 20 years now, um, many of which have been very unsuccessful. You guys don't know about all the ones I botch, right? You don't hear about the, the failures or... The, the failed experiments don't go, they don't get talked about, they don't win the tournaments. So, uh, but they're, they're very important, they're part of the process. I have thousands of failed experiment list ideas and uh, I'm very eager to talk about what the process actually looks like, how you can go about writing your own tournament winning lists and, and really just understand the theory and the thought process behind list building. So I'm going to pull up the questions of the week, see if anyone asked any, and really just start flowing with it, just start explaining the list building process. So I think with list building, it everyone has to know their style. You hear the old man Brad rant about it, you hear Scarry rant about it, you hear me and Siegs and John and all of us, we, we rant about it, because style is really, really important. Um, a fallacy I think a lot of players fall into I know when I was younger and less experienced, I definitely believed this myself, is that play style doesn't actually matter. So let me explain that. Um, this is a fallacy, so just keep that in mind. The, the idea behind this, this theory is that play style shouldn't matter because there is, in theory, one correct thing to do. There is an optimal list, there is an optimal, um, way to play it, there's an optimal interaction to do in every single style. So you may be um, stylistically aggressive, you may be a really aggressive player, but if you're playing Broviathan, sit there, stand there, shoot you Iron Hands or Death Guard or, or Dark Angels, maybe that's not your best bet. Maybe the optimal way to play it is defensively. And that sucks that you're an aggressive player. Just do the best thing. It's Archangel the best army, then you and you want to play defensively with Archangels, do that when your game's really simple. And this is the fallacy that I and I'm sure many other players had for a while. But as I've gotten more experienced with the game and understood the game on a more intimate level, I've come to find that that's not the case. Play style matters tremendously. When you don't align your army with your play style. This is the human element of the game because at the end of the day, the army is mathematical. The army is a machine of probability. The army that is just interactions on the table. The emotional side to it, the human side to it, that's where it's ingrained essentially in your DNA basically that this is how you want to operate. So if you have this well-oiled machine and you can't use it properly because you're just, you're, your being isn't allowing you to, it's, you're never gonna flow as well as someone who is aligned. So I think it's a fool's errand to try to force a style upon yourself that isn't your style. So the first thing you gotta do is identify that there is no optimal play style because the whole point of a play style is it's unique to you, it's what you do. That's the, the you flair to your army. And you gotta, you gotta embrace that. That's, you know, we're all dealt the hand we're given. So you got to you got to take that you got to embrace it. And you take these you take you at first you got to identify your style. That's the whole point here. So how do you identify your play style? And this is all coming back to list building. This is this is a like a 30 40 minute strategy session about list building and, a, and this is not about like mathematically the best units. You know, find that in the math hammer clinic. This is more the philosophical side to list building. Um, so you got to identify your play style. And 
There's ways you can do that if you're an experienced the game and you haven't identified yourself yet. Are you an aggressive person? Are you a passive person? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Are you someone who's totally comfortable and flexible? You, you can put you in any situation, you'll make it work. Are you someone who's very rigid, schedule oriented? Are you type A, type B? There's tons of psychological things out there you can find, um, the famous YouTube education as I call it. So I, I'm not saying you have to get a psych degree to figure out your play style in 40K. Just do a little self-critical evaluation and not for better or worse. Just figure out what kind of person you are because chances are your play style is going to be directly drawn from that. Me personally, I'm very go with the flow. You can put me in any situation and I'll be totally fine. I don't like confrontation. I'm not afraid of it or I don't cower from it, but I definitely don't try to foster or create situations that encourage confrontation. This is just me as a person. So on the table, what does that look like? I sit in the corner. I, I don't take risky plays. I literally take secondaries, we're going to talk about this too, that encourage my opponent to do what I want them to do, to not play their game. I want to be in control of the situation so I can re react accordingly. And that's the type of, like, I, I like having that stability in, like, life, so I like having that control and, and knowledge in, uh, the, in the game. So where does this come to in list building? Let me give you an example. Ridvin, Mr. Arkan Skari, and I, we're doing the Eldari clinic yesterday. We're talking deep about Dark Eldar lists and Dark Eldar theory and stuff. And Skari has been playing Dark Eldar for centuries, literally centuries. Mono Dark Eldar over and over and over again. He knows every little trick this army has. He knows it better than I ever will. And then I'm over here, new kid on the block, just playing Dark Eldar. And I've come up with Slits and Urgles, and I play test the crap out of my army. And I do it the old fashioned way. I just get the boots dirty, get the hands in, and do the work. And that army wins a GT. John goes and wins the Dallas Open with the Igo 7 and 1. It's pretty good. So, how are we in such different places with our armies, even though we're both such great players with our Geldar? And it came down to the philosophical style to it. I described my list building approach, my core philosophy with Dark Eldar is I wanted to lean into the fact that they are so dominant and playing most of the mission. They are tons of obsec, super fast MSU all over the place. Uh, primary control, that's amazing for primary control. Then they, because of that nature, they're really great at engaging all fronts. They're really great at that kind of secondaries. Deploy scramblers, raise the banners, they can do that. The only thing I'm missing is whatever my guaranteed third secondary is, because the way I look at it is if I have primaries good, two of my three secondaries are good, if I can find a third secondary, bada bing, bada boom, I'm scoring like nearly 100 points every game, and that's a great tactic. So I made my list building strategy for this list to get as close to 100 points as humanly possible, irrespective of my opponent. Now how I did that on the table is all tactical, and that's the units I take, and we'll get to that of course, but that is where it starts. First you pick a play style. My play style is I want to be in control. I want to do a lot of stuff. I want to um, be the one dictating the terms of the fight. I want to be reactive and control things. So I picked a strategy. My core strategy, my win condition that I'm chasing is to get my score to be as close to 100 points as possible regardless of my opponent. Now, in any game of 40K, your, your core fundamental win, con fundamental win condition is uh, of course, to score more points than your opponent. But how you go about doing that? Is that to keep both of our scores super low when I edge you out? Is that to I just totally dominate you on all fronts? It like Is it we both score 100, or I score 100 and you score 90, and nothing's going to change that? Whatever the strategy, or whatever the tactics and approach to getting that goal, that's the goal. Um, so this approach, this strategy to achieving that goal was get as close to 100 points as possible without interacting with my opponent. So back to the Dark Eldar story, this is why I finished my list with lists and ergles and things like that. It gave me that third secondary while we stand. So now I have engage in all fronts covered, I got deploy scramblers slash raise the banners covered, and then I got while we stand me covered. And then I got my primaries covered, boom! Doesn't matter what my opponent's doing, I, I, I don't care, I don't care. I have my plan under control, I'm going to react accordingly, and I'm going to score my 100 points. And that's more or less how it worked. It was awesome. Scary, on the other hand. Seasoned, super strong Dark Eldar player. He's been playing it for decades, centuries, millennia. He comes in and he's like, I don't do any of that. His approach to solving the core fundamental problem, the goal of how do I score more points than my opponent, 
is not to sugarcoat the issue. My goal, as I've stated, or my, my strategy, as I stated, was to score as close to 100 points as possible, irrespective of my opponent, because my opponent, or my, or my strategy, is one that's derived from my play style, and my play style is to just be in control. So, all of that's going on, on my end. Scari's play style is to be very sporadic. He's a very all over the place kind of human. If you ever interacted with him or, or worked with him as a coaching client or, or anything else like that, you would know he's scatterbrained. He's, he's a really smart dude, don't get me wrong. Genius, but, but totally scatterbrained. Um, and that works for him and, and don't know how, but it works for him. And when you watch him play, his games look just like that. There are venoms all over the table. There's just units all over the board and all kinds of positions. How did they even get there? What is going on? That's how it feels to play against Scari. And he likes to create chaos. He likes to take uh, his units and his strategies and, and take unorthodox choices that many would deem bad or many do deem bad because it's not mathematically efficient or it's not um, obvious in its point and click usage. But it's it works for his style because it creates chaos, it creates these weird situations where he's got experience because he's played the same army for 6,000 years and he knows every scenario that army has ever been in. And your opponent's like, wow, I've never been in this variation of my army versus Dark Eldar, I guess we're flying from the seat of our pants. And he is banking that he is better at shooting from the hip than you are. So he tries to create these scenarios with the sole purpose of scoring more points than his opponent. So his list building style has like a whole bunch of one ofs. We got one of Reaver Jet Bikes, Nine Man. We got Void Raven Bombers because that's such a psychological thing. It creates chaos. We got um, just units that are unorthodox, Venoms even. Venoms are just so mathematically inferior to Raiders. But why? Because they're small and tiny. They can zoom 26 inches and then charge something. It's a, a Raider just can't do that. So with its small footprint, it's really useful. Not to make this a Dark Eldar. The point here, is really just anecdotes to drive home that it all starts with your play style. Understand your play style and then make sure you align your army list with your play style. So step two, how do you start writing your list? Now that we've identified our play style, we gotta pick that goal. We gotta pick that strategy. The goal, as I stated, is always to score more points than your opponent. That is literally how you win 40K. There's no other way to do it. That's how you do it. So assuming your goal is to win, score more points than your opponent. The strategy is, is the question how. Do I play defensively? Do I play aggressively? Do I do all that? And that's where your play style comes in. So align those two things, and then your strategy could be score as close to 100 points as possible, irrespective of your opponent. That's Death Guard. Death Guard love to do that. Dark Angels love to do that. Dark Eldar, in my approach to them, love to do that. You could write a lot of armies to that. I'm sure Necrons can. Not every army can. So you have to make sure that you're aligned on all fronts here. Then. It all starts with concepts. I haven't even mentioned a unit, right? I still haven't said a single unit's name in this how to write a list for tournament winners clinic. What, what a concept. It all starts with understanding these relationships. When you finally get down to it, you know, pen to paper, I have my army, I have strategy, I have my play style, I have my goal, this is what I'm gonna do. How do you go about writing your list? All right, so I'm gonna play, I'm gonna speak to what I know, because uh, you know, who am I to speak for something I don't know. I'm gonna play my Death Guard, and my strategy with the Death Guard is the same thing, to score as close to 100 points as possible, irrespective to my opponent. So that means I need to have my secondaries covered and a plan for the primaries. Let's start with the secondaries, because that'll really define a lot of my army, because I'll need to be able to do so many different things. Looking at the Death Guard secondaries. While We Stand is so natural, so I'll start taking units that are good while we stand. I will start letting like, while we stand be a list designing feature of mine. I will take maybe a 10 man break of Terminators because I you know that's super tough to kill. Maybe I will spring for Demon Princes with Wings at 185 to outcost a Plague Burst Crawler. And then now I have this really hard to kill character behind the Terminator brick as the while we stand, not a moderately hard to kill tank that's still vulnerable to just mass Dark Lances or something like that. So then I'll start to define my units like that. Okay, I need to score these secondaries irregardless of my opponent. What can I do that with? Engage in all fronts is one, but Death Guard are really slow. All right, well, they have the spoiled ground and domination. Those are pretty, you know, half the games you can take domination. There's an odd number of objectives. That's pretty easy. The spoiled ground, just be alive at the end of the game. Be all over the table. That's reasonable. I'm tough. I'll lean into being tough. 
And you can start to see how, how one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next. It all starts with conceptual stuff. Then um, it doesn't have to be that way, though. Like, you can, you can approach it. Let me give you an example of a different army. So if my style is something such as Archon Scaris, where I'm trying to create chaos, and I'm trying to play in the moment 40k, and I'm trying to just make my opponent feel uncomfortable, this is where I might start to, in the hopes to just simply score more points than he does because I played every little micro scenario on the table just a little bit better than my opponent. Maybe my army's worse, maybe I got table, but I've robbed you of enough points throughout the game. That's totally viable as a plan. The goal, the ultimate goal is to simply score more points than your opponent. So, Skari over here, if I was trying to build a list like him, and I'm not just going to copy his list, maybe I want to create some chaos with my Dark Elder and be able to play the mission. So I don't want to just take max liquefiers and raiders and and points efficient stuff like Incubi and just spam out raiders. And the reason here is not because that's bad, but because that's not the goal. The goal of that army is simply to just table you. I'm mathematically superior to you in like every single way, I hope. So let me just use my math to, to dumpster you in numbers. I have tricks. Dark Elder always has tricks. They're fast. They can move, advance, charge, all kinds of stuff. But the, you don't take max liquefiers to be janky with them. Let's, who are we talking about? So take a step back from, from the tried and true and the internet hype and, uh, and your play style is to cause some chaos and to outplay your opponent, essentially not to outmath your opponent. Take units that let you outplay your opponent. I actually just tried 30 liquefiers in a list the other day. I think I was playing against Jack in a test game. Um, I'm really glad we didn't show it in the war room because it was an embarrassment. But I tried 30 liquefiers and it really, it wasn't me. I hated it. I've tried it twice now. Like 30 liquefiers, I like to, I like to play options and it's just the same option over and over and over. And if I don't feel like liquefiers are the best tool for this job, I'm going to feel like my list sucks. And that's exactly how I felt. Like you end up with liquefiers and inefficient liquefiers. Anyways. So if I'm trying to create a list that's diverse for the sake of being diverse to cause chaos, my strategy is to cause chaos because I want to use that to then score more points than you on the table by just outplaying in little weird micro scenarios, capitalizing on unfamiliar mistakes. I want fast units. That's why Scarry likes Reaver Jet Bikes right there. Not because they're awesome. They're literally 20 point witches with one less attack that move really fast and are not obsacks. It's very, why am I paying for this? Why am I running a nine-man reaver jet bike squad? Well, it's because it opens up opportunities to charge, potentially turn one. He's running a freaking Archon with the Animus Vitae in a Venom. So this is a weird scenario, right? Like Dark Eldor normally can't charge turn one, not cross court like that. But between the combination of the Animus Vitae Relic and Reaver jet bikes on turn one, you can fly 30 inches, engage a whole bunch of stuff, tie up all the enemy guns on turn one so they're just like busy dealing with these Reavers that cost 200 freaking points. Um, so that's not cheap in Dark Eldar. Busy dealing with these Reavers. And then while that's happening, you explode out with six Raiders or whatever it is. And you tell your opponent, you can't deal with this problem because there's 10 Reavers tying up all your guns. So I guess I just got to cross the midboard in one turn. You take things like Venoms because sometimes you very often find yourself in tournaments with a piece of terrain that's not large enough to hide a Raider, but it is large enough to hide a Venom. And you have two options as the Dark Eldar player here. Option one is to put your Venom there and hope it survives. Maybe put your Venom there, get the guys out behind the wall because they're small enough for sure and, and maybe that's enough. Or don't put your, Venom, your Raider there and the whole play is lost to you. If you just put a Venom there, problem solved. You know, like I have a unit there, it can't be shot. There's an Venom, five incubi and a Venom. That, that sucks for you. So there's a real value to just taking weird stuff for niche circumstances and then trying to create those niche circumstances. I always talk about how you want to simplify the board state for yourself and you want to complicate the board state for your opponent. This is a very fundamental strategy to 40K. This is something you should just always be trying to do. The simpler the game is for you to look at and analyze, the, the less stuff that's going on. All right, they got 30 of Brax and, and Raiders. That's, they're going to come forward and liquefy me. Got it. They got 4,000 Castle and Robots. They're going to shoot me from across the table. Neat. They got 300 Orc Boys. They're going to take over the whole board and try to charge me. 
awesome. Maybe they won't try to charge me. Who knows? But um, that's really simple to try to just look at and figure out. When you take a unit of Kronos, when you take a solo Ravager, when you take a solo Trueborn unit, when you take uh, one Slith and Ergo Party, one big unit of Reavers, still have some redundancy, still have like two Incubi Venoms, maybe a classic big Witch Squad and a Raider, maybe two of those. It don't, I'm not saying your list has to be all one of those, maybe you can have two rack units. Season and flavor it to taste, you know? Make it be yours, is what I'm saying. And instead of just taking mathematically the best units, there is a real strong philosophy to not doing that and leaning into skill as a more effective way to win the game and, and uncertain scenarios and, and causing chaos, as, as I've been saying it, maybe that's better than just taking mathematically the best army. There's a, there are tons of ratios and things I could give you to explain, like, um, in, in your math list, you want to have just this many points and like dreadnoughts and then some indirect fire and some planes to help you get angles and, and then deep striking stuff to force people to screen so you can then shoot the screens. There is really decisions and tactics there to, to really amplify the effectiveness of your, of your mono-dimensional gunline army or your mono-dimensional close combat army. There's tons of individual stuff that you can take there. But what I'm saying is you need to pick your play style to bring it all back home. It starts with identifying your play style. Then it goes to figuring out what strategy you're going to employ from a philosophical perspective to win the game. And again, just to reiterate what that is, am I trying to score as close to 100 points as possible, regardless of my opponent? Am I trying to simply score more points than my opponent? Doesn't matter if it's we both come out of there bloodied with 30 to 40, or if we come out there 90 to 80. I'm just going to try to score more points than them. Is your score, is your game to create a null game where like we're just going to sit here and not play with each other, um, but I'm going to win that, that game in a slow points race? Is your game just straight up to table them? You know, like I'm the kind of guy, I just like tabling my opponent. I just like having all the power. I want to have models left. I don't want my opponent to have models left. I'm going to feel good about this. It's totally valid. Not how I choose to play 40K. That is okay. Play to your strengths. I can't say that enough. So then... Identify your win condition with respect to your play style and your army strengths and weaknesses, of course, and what your army is actually good at. And you, you could change your army to match your play style. I highly recommend that. Uh, if you want to play 40k a certain way, don't let your army tell you not to. Um, but if you are letting your army tell you not to because you're the guy who loves Blood Angels and you play, you, you're a secret vampire and, and everything you see is red and you just love Blood Angels, you think you're an angel, whatever it is, that's fine. But just understand that if Blood Angels want to go forward and you want to go in the corner because that's who you are and that's who Blood Angels are, that's always going to be a tug of war. That's always going to suck for you. That's never going to go away. You can make it less impactful and less impactful and less impactful, but it will always be there. That's who you are. That's who Blood Angels are. Until they get a new codex and then maybe Blood Angels do something else entirely. But let's, let's try to stay within the scope of 40K as we know it. Um, so all that said... Where was that? You take the play style, then you take your strategy, where it comes after that. That's when you start picking your units to play towards that strategy. And this is where math and efficiency certainly does come in. You know, you don't want to take the bad units for the sake of being bad in Special Snowflake. There is merits to that, strategically, which I've been explaining. But there, you know, I run racks in my Dark Yeldor army. I, who am I kidding? I run Incubi, I run the Super Succubus, like if a unit's good, a unit's good. Uh, no, I'm not telling you not to run Death Shroud Terminators and Death Guard of the Foul Blight Spawn and Plaper Scrawlers, but all I'm saying is your strategies, your units need to be able to execute your strategy. You're not taking, to let your units dictate what your strategy is to say, all right, Dreadnought Contemptors are, are really freaking powerful, let me spam them out the butt. Don't do that unless that's really who you are unless you're really like the guy who just wants to table people like don't let the units dictate how you play 40k you dictate how you play 40k so then if you are the guy who really just wants to table your opponent and you really want to just make him not have models left yeah you're looking at all the efficient choices you're looking at triple contemptor triple blabers crawler all that kind of stuff but also you have to be able to beat yourself and this is this is the last real nugget of wisdom I'm going to leave with you. 
when you're building lists, you're also building your opponent's lists in your brain. This is the, this is the key secret sauce right here. Every single time I write a list, every single time I have an army concept, every single time I think of anything new in 40K, even if it's a terrible idea that ends up never being talked about and thrown into the dumpster of ideas that I have, um, you know, every now and then you do get a new diamond. Point being, as I develop this Death Guard army that is designed to score as close to 100 points as possible, I've got Wally Stands, i got Spoiled Ground, i got uh, Spread the Sickness, whatever it might be. As I'm doing that, I have to constantly be checking over and over again with myself, and maybe if you have playtest partners, maybe you have members in the war room, your Discord members, your community that we, we try to provide for you, ask them. So, and, and really be critical about this. Because no one's getting hurt besides you by, by, by being the tough guy in the room here. So really ask yourself, what beats this? How would I answer this? Would I, would I beat, how would I beat my own Death Guard army? How could someone go about beating it? Couple ways. I was thinking Harlequins would be a real challenge to me. It's like, man, they can blow up my Dreadnoughts really effectively with all their hair buyer bikes. They're so fast, I'll never catch them. They can dance obsec models onto my primary, so now I'm not scoring 100 points irrespective of my opponent. I'm only scoring like 70 points. They can put up more than 70 points. How do I beat Harlequins? And this, this lets me then identify the problems. All right, so my strategy is sound. I'm going to score 100 points. It doesn't matter what units I took. Harlequins are going to beat me, right? Harlequins are going to are going to cause me problems. How do I handle Harlequins? Harlequins don't like uh, auras of no rerolls. Harlequins don't like 18-inch auto-hitting flamers. Maybe I'll take some death shrouds. Harlequins don't like 12-inch foul blight spawns. Maybe I'll take ferrymen. And then this, you do this over and over again. Okay, I solved my Harlequin problem by putting in the ferryman foul blight spawn. But now John comes up to me and he's like, Nick, what if I run my triple dark talent list with all these rift cannons blowing up you up of mortals? And like, man, did I just solve one problem to create another? Maybe I could solve both. Let me put my contenders in there. Maybe I'll outflank my contenders. Learn to play your army better is also a valid answer here. You have a set of tools. See how you can use your tools instead of just trying to tinker with your tools. There's a lot of ways to use different units if you get creative. And this is Tiskari's whole point with list building. Get creative. Don't just fall into, I have a Dreadnought, all I can do is shoot. I have outflanked my Dreadnoughts plenty of time in a tournament. No one's outflanking Dreadnoughts, but you know what? I want to be able to shoot their guns so that my Dreadnoughts can shoot turns 2, 3, 4, and 5 unhindered. I don't want to risk my Dreadnoughts getting blown up turn 1 and then I just don't have guns for the rest of the game. So I'll take a loss on turn 1 to take a win on turns 2 through 5. No problem. So think about that kind of stuff when you're going through lists. It doesn't just start with the units. I can't stress this again. Don't let the units dictate your army. Let your, I'm just going to summarize it all. Play style, then figure out your strategy. Your strategy has to align themselves with your play style. The, the strategy being, again, like how close do I, do I get to 100 points? Do I score more than you? Do I play def aggressive? Do I play defensive? How, what's the plan here? Then pick the units that make sense to fulfill your strategy. Your strategy is irrespective of your opponents, typically. That your strategy is what you're doing. Then you got your tactics and your, your tech choices. And this is how, all right, your strategy is going to have holes in it, your strategy is going to have problems, your plan to beat your opponent, your units you've taken to fulfill your strategy, they're, they're going to have weaknesses. So then take the remainder of your points and fiddle with your points to just keep plugging every weakness you can, everything you can think of that could possibly beat your army, keep molding and shifting and moving your army until you've come up with the answers for it. And it's never really a finished process. No list is, it's, I, I have a saying, I'm not that much of an artist as far as the hobbying of this industry goes, but you guys know that. I make, I, I, I'm an avid believer that art is never finished, art is always uh, abandoned or, or just forgotten about or just left. Um, like the Mona Lisa, you know, maybe it's finished in theory, but like, is it, is it, you know, like what if you just added a brushstroke to it? Not to say that I'm a painter of the Mona Lisa. I'm getting a little out of hand. But it's finished. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, basically. So art, lists, all that stuff, they're works in progress. They're constant works in progress in my mind. A snapshot of my list that won the Dallas Open was my list submitted to an event that day. And then, or John, John piloted it. So you know, there's that. And then now I'm on like 65 different Dark Elder lists. There's nothing wrong with that one. I might still play that one, but that's just an idea I had, and that's the one I submitted that day. 
So anyway, we got Snipe R. Could you list all the possible play styles in 40K? Love this strategy session, by the way. Oh, I will. I don't think I can really do that off the cuff. I, I could definitely summarize them. Like, a, like I, there, there's got to be a real classification there. Like, you can be defensive, you can be aggressive, MSU, multiple small units. You could do Death Star 40K. You could try to bully the center. You could play a game to cause chaos and try to win micro interactions. You can try to um, play a very, ah, there's so many. It, it's truly, 40K is, is such an infinitely sized game that to try to simplify it in a bunch of categories is just oversimplifying it at a certain point. So I'll leave you with that. I think this was a very fun one. I had a blast doing it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to post it into the war room or contact us email. Uh, anyways, thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you all later. Dive even deeper into competitive 40k and become a member of the world's most knowledgeable and positive community. The War Room is an exclusive group that brings together the world's best 40k players as coaches to help anyone from a newer player to an experienced tournament veteran learn, grow, and reach their goals within our shared hobby. Each week we offer a variety of live stream coaching matches centered around illuminating the thought process and in-game decision making of top players. We explain everything we're doing and why. You'll learn about the ever-evolving meta, match play mission theory, list making, and discussion of every faction in the game, and have access to analysis of all the latest rules. Our team of highly experienced coaches teach weekly clinics on each individual faction, strategy sessions on deployment and cool tricks, and meta analyses each week during Meta Monday. We are committed to not only providing the best knowledge for players available, but also building a one-of-a-kind community. Come be a part of the War Room.